bring Timmy the trash can, and I love trash. Popcorn boxes, cups, and candy wrappers. Mmm, they all taste so good. Instead of throwing your trash on the floor, won't you please give it to me? Thank you for considering your fellow patrons. Welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I'm here with Devin Costa. What's up, Tim? We are on the porch, so you're all fucking happy now. I know. When we're not on the porch, everybody gets angry. We just uh, saw a clip of uh, Sebastian Maniscalco hosting the VMAs, the Video Music Awards on MTV. Yeah. And that is an unwinnable. Yeah, impossible. It's an impossible position for a comedian to be in. Sebastian's amazing. He's one of the best comedians uh, doing it right now. He sold out the garden. He's got like an attendance record. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. The guy's amazing. Uh, but it's rough. And he even said he was on like CBS, uh, the, the morning show or whatever, going, this is not my demo. Yeah, he was saying he's nervous too. Yeah, he's like, I'm nervous. It's not my demo. And so he, he's a little bit of a rough. Yeah. It's a little rough. He does a few jokes about people being triggered. Yeah. They don't like it. He's not, he's, you know, <laughs> He's an older guy. Yeah. They don't want a comedian in there. No, no. These people, they're 15 year old kids. If they wanted a comedian, it would have been like Pete Davidson. That's the guy. Right. Somebody young, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, it was a weird choice. Yeah. It was like Bobby Kelly hosting <laughs> the MTV Music Awards, you know? <laughs> hey, dude. You know what, dude? The minute he starts bobbing, he just yeah. starts cursing out the crowd. Yeah. Hey, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> hey, dude. Anybody else here fat? Anyway, I love Bobby, but I would have bombed. Everyone, it would have been bad. Yeah. Would no not have been what. good. Yeah. And, and and Sebastian survived, but it was like, it, it, you know, you could almost see like the minute where I almost wished as a comic, he had just gotten real confrontational. Yeah. And been like, hey, you know what? Oh, you don't want to laugh? How about fucking this? How about I got paid already? And I don't give a fuck if you laugh, okay? Yeah. How, and then just started going at just people. Because people are smirking in the crowd. Yeah, They're people kind are of smirking. Like, what is he this just starts doing? calling people yeah. out in the crowd. Hey, Queen Latifah, why don't you wipe that gorilla grin off your fat hey, fucking face? Queen Latifah, okay? You're so happy. What did you get a, a high score on freecreditreport.com? What's going on? <laughs> hey, Cardi B, does that stand for hepatitis B? <laughs> You're a dirty whore. <laughs> I already got paid, folks. I don't give a fuck. Hey, Sean Mendez is here. We know you're gay. Okay? You keep hiding it. Are you embarrassed? <laughs> you smoke more bone than a Texas pit master. It's about just, people being gay. Are just, you <laughs> just come out with it. Hey, Lizzo's in the backstage putting her diabetic boots on, getting ready to perform for everybody. Okay? I know it's so empowering. She's hooked up. It's not that empowering when she's hooked up to five sleep apnea machines. So she doesn't die in the middle of the night. Okay. I walked through a cloud of smoke. My mom's cooking zucchini back there. It's a good fucking joke. That's what he opened with. Didn't get much. Yeah. I would just love if you just went at him. Just went at him. Migos is here. What the fuck is that? That sounds like a, something I order in a restaurant that I'm embarrassed my wife took me to. You know what I mean? She always wants to go to these cultural ethnic spots. Have you been to these places? I would love it if you just went fucking hard. Yeah. It's just went, totally off brand. Just totally right at them. Would've you know, amazing. it would have been great. Would have been super memorable. It would have been absolutely. Hey, Billy Ray Cyrus is here. Hey, your daughter is a pansexual, bipolar, schizophrenic whore. How about that? <laughs> Give it up for raising that MK Ultra victim. <laughs> when did you turn her over to the government? Three? Jesus. Is she even sexy? What is she doing? She's humping the floor. It's like she's got an autoimmune disease. Are you embarrassed? Uh, Little Nas X is here. You're, hey, it's a reverse situation. The black guy's dragging the white guy's corpse around. Give it up for Billy Ray Cyrus. You one hit wonder. You're living off your daughter and this black gay guy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's get this show started. You want to be triggered? 
Yeah. That yeah. would have been a better show. I would have rathered that. That would so have been the greatest much. thing to ever happen, probably. It would have been the greatest thing in the history of entertainment. <laughs> Had he just gone out and torched the entire room and refused to get off stage. <laughs> what if he refused to get off stage? <laughs> no, I'm not done. You could go to commercial, and when you come back, I'll be standing right fucking here. But not just hatred that he's bobbing, like it's racist. He, it's, all these agendas he come He just out. goes out, you know? <laughs> He just starts going it up because that's what happens. Yeah. People don't realize, like, is Michael Richards a racist? Probably. But <laughs> what that was really about is a guy who had been pushed to his wits end. Yeah. And sometimes you feel that way when you're bombing. It is the horrible feeling or when you're not doing well and you just want to lash out mm -hmm. at people. To say the worst things. And say the worst things possible to them to make them, because they're already not laughing. Right. So it's like, let's make them upset. Get them you to know? feel something. Let's get them to feel something. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, I would have loved to see that. Great comedian. Guy's amazing. Weird gig. Yeah. That's a challenging gig. I just called Andrew Schultz. I was like, what do you do in that situation? Schultz was like, maybe musical comedy works. That's where you bring out the Jimmy Fallon dumb shit. Right. Yeah. And you sing with Miss Piggy. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, if you're a fan of this podcast and you listen to it, um, I predicted the future. I said on the podcast last week, there will just be a big shaking ass that will just be what music is. Like why? And Lizzo, who is insanely talented, but performed in front of just a big bulbous ass yeah. that shook in the background. That literally happened a week after you said that. Wild. Jeez. So I mean it's like we're manifesting yeah. shit uh, on the show. It's back to school. I said I was going to do this episode for a very long time. This is an episode that is for children. High school kids kids in college maybe it applies to everybody the rules and the laws of popularity are uh what's the word i'm looking for here they apply to everybody uh-huh universal, universal. Okay. correct thank you they are universal oh what you never fucking stumbled on a word <laughs> you never fucking half of you can't even speak Half of you in this room got a 75 IQ. Should I have used the bonics? Yeah. Hey, maybe a little ebonics. Yo, yo. <laughs> yo, yo. Um, it's going to be so hard to not do that for the whole episode. <laughs> We're going to try, but I'm really not making any promises. Yeah. It's hard to see something like that. It's and then hard. just talk about anything As else. As a comic, I'm like, Man, it's a rough gig. And man, I wish you went at him, which you can't do. Mm -hmm. But it would just be fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The laws of popularity are universal. That being said, I've said it before. If you're a loser in high school, you will be a loser for the rest of your life. Even if you have lots of money and you succeed uh, in a profession, uh, you are going to internalize that in your entire life. You'll be a loser. And I'm out here in L.A., I meet these people that are very successful, very rich, and have never fully like made peace with that period in their lives. It's an incredibly important period in your life. And if you throw it away and you learn the wrong lessons from it, which most people do, um, and I don't mean, listen, if you're like somebody who's trans and getting beaten up every day, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm saying that this advice is for people that are you know, comfortable with themselves to the extent that they can play the game mm -hmm. in a social arena. If you are cutting yourself, if you are throwing up every day, if you are a drug addict, if your parents are molesting you, if you're living in a car, I get it. I don't need the messages and the emails. Like, How was I supposed to be popular when my dad was fucking me? I don't know. Fuck him better. <laughs> but really, I don't need... Throw your back into it. But if it's happening anyway, nothing, not doing a good job never makes sense, no matter what job you're doing and for who. Right. Point being, um, I don't need the emails. I understand that there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with more important shit than being popular. So they think. But that's not the case. 
Everybody, you know what time it is, baby. You know what time it is. It's time to talk about fucking. It's that time. I'm a party comic, and we're going to have a party. We're partying. That's what we're about. Fun in the sun. Cancun, Molly, GHB, Corona with lime. Fucking in a pool. Fucking on a beach. Fucking in, a, in your penthouse apartment. Fucking. That's what this show's about. It's what I'm about, okay? That's why you pump that iron. That's why I'm a keto kid. I'm just doing keto. I don't give a fuck. I haven't had a carb in three days. I punched a woman in the face today. Uh, I will get strong enough to start punching men. We'll start with women. And that's what it is. I don't give a fuck. I'm training. I'm tough. I'm a professional fighter. Three days on keto. I have the heart of a lion. I am a world champion heavyweight world champion. Many of you aren't on keto and I wouldn't say anything negative about you other than, I mean, it's just like, you're not men. That's all. You're not men. You're not a male. There's nothing wrong with that. You're big, sloppy, carb laden vag. So for those of you who aren't on keto, who aren't tough, who aren't cool, maybe you need a little blue chew to keep that dick hard. My dick's hard 24 hours a day, motherfucker. Every single day I open Uber car doors with it. Okay. Some of you don't have that because you're not tough. You're not eating meat. Meat. You're not eating eggs, whole eggs. Get that yolk in there. Protein. Many of you aren't doing that. You're eating fi- You're eating bread. I want bread. You're eating pasta. If I want a bowl of pasta. I'm a baby. Eat a fucking steak that you cook outside. You hear it sizzle. That's a piece of meat being cooked in a pan outside by a lake, like a fucking man. For those of you who aren't a man, you know what you need? And there's nothing wrong with this. A little blue chew. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, except it's in a chewable form. You do not have to go to the doctor. It's an easy online consultation, quick and easy. Blue Chew's doctors will be able to prescribe you their pills Online, very easy. They ship them to your house in discreet packaging. Okay? Blue fucking chew. Okay? You take them, you stay hard. You fuck that bitch. Okay? You don't learn her name. You don't take her out to eat. You don't do any of that shit. You're a fucking man. You're the leader of the wolf pack. You're the alpha dog. You don't talk to that bitch. You don't even know that bitch after you nut. You understand? And if it's a dude, you fuck that twink. You don't ask him his name. Doesn't matter. You fuck that twink and you throw him in the street. Say, get out of here, twink. I don't need you. I'm a fucking man. All I need is my meat, my cock, and then the meat that I eat. Keto. You're just sweating all day. Just sweat. Sweat that shit out. Okay? If you're out on a date with somebody and they order maybe a a carbohydrate or they order something with sugar, pity that weak bitch. You understand? Got to get that blue chew, that chewable dick pill. Keeps you nice and hard. Hard like a rocket. You could just fuck all night. Boom, boom, boom. Fuck foreplay. It doesn't matter. Fuck if she's getting off. It's about you. You got a nut. Don't be doing any anything else. Foreplay. Stop it. Don't put your fingers anywhere. Your fingers are for tearing apart meat, putting it in your mouth. Just fuck. You don't kiss. You don't kiss nobody. You don't even look at them. You make them face the fucking wall. Okay? Boom. Pow, 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 pow. Violent, nasty, fucking, uh, 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 on a dirty mattress. Rent an apartment to fuck. Don't even do it in your own home. Rent a dirty mattress in an apartment to just fuck and have no air conditioning. Dirty, sweaty, fucking above a grocery store. Hopefully it's getting robbed right as you're fucking. You hear gunshots piercing people's flesh as you're coming. That's the best. Try to get an apartment in a bad area, flop house. So you could fuck while other people are getting murdered. Bluechew.com. What's the promo code? TD. TD. 
Free shipping. No, you pay $5 shipping. $5. First order free. First order is free. How fucking good is that, folks? You have no reason not to get this. First order is free. And you know the way it is. You know, I'm kidding. Uh, but, you know, we're all in our, yeah, I'm in my mid-30s. Sometimes your dick just doesn't want to play the game. Your dick just doesn't want to play the game, but that's okay because you got a secret weapon. You got that blue chew, you know? You got that blue chew. Promo code TD, $5 shipping. They'll give you your first order free. If it works, keep using it. If it doesn't, who cares? Doesn't matter, you know? You're a fucking man. You got a dick. Nice and hard. Keep that dick hard, okay? Maybe you don't have a sexual partner. You just want a hard dick. That's cool, too. You just walk around a gym with that big, hard dick. Let everybody know you're a fucking king. Okay? What were you like in school? Because I'm going to go into my I story. I was the fat kid that uh, was kind of viciously mean and funny, so I didn't really get much shit. Yes, and that's an important archetype of person to be. Yeah. The fat, vicious kid. <laughs> the kid who's always on the always verge on the of defense. tears. Yeah. Always on the verge of a total full breakdown. Yep. And just attacking. I, I've been this person for a decade. Attacking <laughs> left and right. Right. Just shredding people before they can shred you. Preemptive war. Yes. Fight them there so we don't have to fight them here. Yeah. Yes. That's an important fucking person to be. Schools need those. Those fuckers keep you on your toes because they have nothing to lose. They go home. They jerk off. They are sad. Mm -hmm. They eat disgusting food. They look at themselves and they want to die. And that's the fucker that comes in. Ben, go check that camera. Make sure it's not fucking around. That's the person who comes in and really fucking gives it to you. Yeah. He keeps everybody on their toes. Even the popular kids will kind of keep him around yeah. because usually he's a little more clever than they are. He's a little bit more. He can kind of roll with the punches a little bit. Yeah. And they know that he's not a threat to them. He's not fucking their chicks. Right. He's not cooler than them. He's not catching the pass. That they should on the field, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. When I started school, I was like uh, in my shell, didn't talk to anyone, was still doing drugs, still had friends from my hometown. Didn't care. Didn't want to participate in Catholic high school. Thought it was a waste of time. I'm hanging out with crackheads in a crack house. Who gives a fuck about you and your backyard and whatever? I don't care about your sports team. It was all a defense mechanism. Right. You know? And I sat alone in ninth grade with the other table of kids. And we all eat, ate alone and didn't really speak to each other in ninth grade. That's a tough thing because you're not the a loser in the sense where you're not the biggest loser where people come up and maybe help you even because they feel bad for you. But you're, as, you're enough of a loser to where you are sitting at a table with other people and you're not speaking. You do not have any social. Mm -hmm. 10th grade, I got a little better. 11th grade, I made a group of friends. And then 12th grade, I got nominated for Homecoming King and I was very popular. And it was a journey. And there are rules. And there are ways to behave. And we're going to go through this. This is very important. For people out there that are listening and people say to me, oh, uh, things have changed now because of social media. Yes and no. Yes and no. First rule, if you are not popular, it is your fault. 100 percent. Excusing the people that I mentioned up top, the people getting fingered by grandpa. Let's <laughs> leave them out. But if you are relatively stable and you can handle what's going on and you have regular teenage angst and whatever, if you are not connecting with people, bitch, it's on you. Mm -hmm. You are not better and smarter than everybody else. Maybe you are, but if you're smarter than everybody else, you can figure out a way to be their fucking friend. Mm -hmm. If you can outsmart somebody, you can outsmart your way into their social fucking circle. Right. Manipulation. Manipulation. fucking lation yeah. Currency manipulation, arbitrage, bitches. <laughs> Stop holding on to this, this uh, loserdom. Stop holding on to this. Uh, you think that there's some value in being misunderstood, being some goth Daria type bitch, whatever. No. There is no value to that. There is no value to holding on to these like... Uh, 
you know, these things that define you as a person if they're driving everyone away. Right. Yeah. Okay. A lot of times, they're, and that doesn't mean that to be popular, you have to be a perfect person or you even have to be remarkably talented or good looking. You don't. You just have to figure out what you're good at and display it in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So, a few things off the top, very general rules. Know who the popular people are, and you do already, but know who the very popular people are. Know who are the A's, and then know who are the B's. Know who are the safeties. Right. Know who's in the scene but really shouldn't be. Know who's self-conscious about not bringing a lot to the table. Know the people that are the third call to go to the party. You're going to be their friend. You're not going to the top right. of the heap first. Mm -hmm. You're going to be friends with the person who doesn't really belong in the popular group, who doesn't really get li like the fat, vicious kid. Mm -hmm. You're going to be friend them. You're going to befriend the hanger on. Yeah. The sporty dykey chick who's good at sports, but is weird and somehow is at all the parties. She'll have some of them at her house and everybody's like, oh, we love you, Jackie. But no one loves Jackie. She looks like a horse. <laughs> but why is she? There's always one girl in the popular crowd that looks like a horse. She is a field hockey fire breathing dyke right. and doesn't know it yet. OK. You get on her radar. Or you get on the radar of the kid who's rich, but not cool. Rich people, by the way, are never not cool. They just haven't grown into who they are yet. Rich people will always be cool. They're cold and aloof because they're different. But around junior year or senior year, they start driving their dad's BMW to school. They start wearing nicer clothes. They grow into themselves. They grow into their wealth. Yeah. They start having parties at their house. That house is on the water. It's got acreage. People are growing up and they're realizing that there's more than just catching a fucking football. This kid's got a dope fucking life. Be that guy's friend. Figure a way into his circle. Figure a way into horse face, fire breathing, dyke, Jackie's circle. Figure a way into the circle of somebody who doesn't belong in the group or somebody who's marginal. Mm -hmm. You need a marginal figure in order to break in for the most part. Right, yeah. That's really the way you should be. Here's the other thing. Be hungry and not desperate. Don't ever seem desperate. Always seem like you have plans. But be hungry to go do things with people. Be hungry because you want to be there. Be hungry because it's important that you, you go out and that you're seen. Don't be desperate. Don't be clingy. Let people call you. Let them text you. Mm -hmm. Don't be the person that's constantly driving it, driving right, it. Right. You know, it gets annoying to people. Also, you know? give, give people rides. Be the first person with a car. Huge. That's huge. Yeah. Huge. Be a person with a car. Be a person with drugs. Be a person with a gun. Be a person <laughs> with bullets. Be a person. Be a fucking person. Be a person with a house where you can have a party. Be a person with a right. cool backyard. Take the initiative. Mm -hmm. What are people lacking? What does a popular group lack? Is it a funny person? What is it? Be that. Try to be that. If you're good looking, sell that. If you're funny, sell that. If you're completely bland, sell that. Mm -hmm. People need bland. Right. Okay? They need somebody to really not make any impressions and stand around. You want to be that guy? Be that fucking guy. Okay? Yeah. Here's the other thing, and this is the thing people aren't going to like. <laughs> I think we've been pretty non-controversial so far. <laughs> I'm on keto. I'm a keto kid. Brenda Chubb is supervising all of my meals. I was denied a smoothie, but I was okayed my egg breakfast, which had gravla and spinach. Don't fuck with me, folks. Your loser friends got to go. They got to go. Tommy, who's been your friend forever, who shits himself, he's got to go. Because he's only your friend because you two also suck. You got to go. You got to move the fuck on. You it's, level up. it's over. Level the fuck up. Stop holding on to your old life, your old ideas, your old friends. They suck and they want you to suck and they want you to die and they'll never be fucking happy for you if you start to do well. The minute you go to a cool party or somebody likes you, they're going to fucking change and then they're going to tell you that you've changed. You have changed. OK, but not in a meaningful way. You don't start treating them like shit or anything, but you're just not going to be relating to them as much because they want to complain about how bad everything and how much every everyone sucks. And then once people don't suck a little bit, it throws the dynamic off. So they got to fucking go mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be a long process. They got to fucking go. OK, it'll be awkward. Mm -hmm. 
You know their parents. It'll be awkward. It's fine. They got to go. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Hollywood is, is writes popular culture, and popular culture is written by losers. So they fetishize losers and make them all into kings and queens, and that they all graduate and go on and write plays and movies and sing songs, and they all become fucking Fiona Apple. No, they don't. There's one Fiona Apple, and the rest of you are eating cat litter on your floor. You're eating your own vomit like a, like a cat. Okay, you're not feeling Apple. You you don't ha- you stop. Cut it out. You're not that person. Okay, so let's stop pretending. But Hollywood will make you think you can be, and they'll make you think that all those popular people, they all uh, they all uh, you know they hit a ceiling and they don't do it. No, they they're fine. Right. They're fine. Law of averages. Let's go by the numbers. They're fine. They become people like Logan Paul, George W. Bush, Cardi B, Donald Trump, and myself. Icons. The thing here, folks, is um, I've always considered myself a business strategist uh, in addition to being a comedian. Being a comedian is just something I do, but my heart and my passion has always been in business. You know? I've always been, you know, a uh, CEO. It's the way I feel. I'm just CEO. I have that mentality. I have the winner's mentality. Many of you don't. I pity you. I wish you were dead, but you're not. You're here on earth, and I have to look at you, and it disgusts me because I've always been a CEO. Now, you say to me, Tim, uh, everything you've done in the business world has been a tremendous failure. You foreclosed on houses. You worked for companies that went out of business. Hey, shut the fuck up, okay? Because that's facts. That's reality. And if you live in that world, you're a bitch. I'm a businessman. I create my own reality. I manifest my reality. Every day I get up and I say, here's how it's going to be. Not how it is, not how it was. Here's how it's going to be. I have tools. I have a toolbox and I take the tools out of the toolbox and I make shit. Okay? I build businesses. You even know what that is? I build businesses. Right now, I am working on a multi-platform, multi-dimensional business that will exist in several dimensions while you bitches are still on earth in our dimension, like fucking losers trying to play catch up. Okay. I'm working. I'm thinking about space tourism. The fuck are you doing? I'm trying to build a business. Okay. What are my tools? I'll tell you a great tool. Great tools. Wix. Wix is a place where you can start a website. You might not have a lot of money, So you can go to Wix and you could choose from one of 500 templates for your website, or you could, you know, you could create your own, or you could have Wix ADI do it, automated ADI, artificial design intelligence. You answer a few simple questions about your business. What is your business? Space tourism. What's the business going to be? A hotel. Where is it going to be located? On the fucking moon, bitch. And then Wix will design a website that lets everybody know. Oh, this guy's opening a fucking hotel on the moon. I don't give a fuck about government permits. I'll bribe those motherfuckers. I know how that works. Okay? You blackmail. You bribe. You coerce. You intimidate. You manipulate. Okay? But you got to let people know what you're doing. You got to let people know that you're going to open the dopest hotel on the moon. I'm talking, and it's not going to be hacky. Like a lot of these moon hotels are going to be hacky. They'll have moon pies. It'll be a space theme. My hotel is not going to be a space theme. Okay? It's not going to be a space. It's going to be a tropical theme, <laughs> which is going to throw people because they're on the fucking moon in zero gravity, and it's going to be that moon crater wasteland and then i'm gonna have a tropical theme a lot of people are gonna do space age i'm gonna do tropical it's gonna throw everybody you're gonna be you're gonna be in cabanas we're gonna create a beach we're gonna have our own wave pool i'm I'm giving it away for free because i'm so confident none of you fuckers are able to touch me and you're not able to you can't execute the way i can execute because it's not just about having the idea it's about execution and the first step is having a website that allows people in you gotta let them in and you gotta let them in and go hey bitch Here's, here's, the, here's your new moon hotel. Wix is cheap. Okay, I'm not trying to spend a lot of money up front on the website. 
because this is going to sell itself. <laughs> the concept is going to sell itself. Okay? It's going to sell itself because people are going to want to go to the moon and they're not going to want some dumb moon hotel. They want to go to a tropical resort on the fucking moon. <laughs> Okay, picture it. You walk into the lobby and it's got big tropical trees, some parrots in the fucking lobby. And I don't give a fuck about the animal control. People tell me I'm abusing animals. They're lucky to work. Those animals are lucky to work. So I'm going to get a bunch of parrots and a lizard or two and it's going to be fun. The kids are going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to walk in. You're going to feel like you're in a tropical rainforest, but you're not. You're on the fucking moon. You're on another planet, you dumb bitch. And you're going to love it. We're going to have room service. We're going to have like, if you go to the hotel and you wake up in the middle of the night and you're hungry, we're going to have like, we're going to have chicken fingers, but like with the Jamaican jerk spice seasoning, it's going to be real hot because you're going to be on the moon and the moon is, uh, is, I think it's cold. So what you're going to have is you're going to have like spicy, spicy, like hot tropical food with like a, like shrimp skewers with like a mango salsa. And it's going to be all fucking rainforest themed you know like the rainforest cafe but high end you know it's gonna cost a lot of money to go to this resort you're gonna have to spend about a million a night it's not gonna be for for people that aren't rich it's gonna be for rich people that want to spend that money okay we're gonna have a pool it's gonna be a wave pool we're gonna have lifeguards they're all gonna be trained so if you want to take your family to the moon and spend four or five mil to have a tropical experience on the moon, you could go to my website. If you want to go to Wix and build your own website, don't take my idea. I don't give a fuck. You can build a hotel on the moon. Don't build a tropical hotel. I'll fucking come for you. You, build, you choose another fucking theme. You do what all these dumb fucks are going to do, some dumb moon theme. It's not going to be like that with mine. I don't give a fuck about space other than that this is in space. Okay? There's not going to be like facts about the moon and shit. You know, these dumb companies are going to put like some dumb moon hotel. It's going to be all space age and cold. It's going to feel cold. It's going to be like everything's going to be white and cold and, and, and it's going to be sterile. It's not, that's not what I'm about. I'm about like bug nets over the beds. Even though there's not going to be any bugs, it's just nice because you're going to be transported back to earth. You're going to feel like you're in earth and we're going to have like fake sunsets in the dining room. We're going to have a restaurant um, and it's going to be awesome, man. That's, it's going to be fucking awesome because the rainforest is burning right now. So you're not going to have that no longer. You're gonna, if you want real nature, you're going to have to go to the moon, to my resort. Because most of the rainforest is being burnt to the ground by, I don't know, people in Brazil for whatever reason. But I respect them. I respect their business. I don't question it. They need to do what they got to do. It's not my problem. You know what I mean? So the reality is if you want that rainforest feeling pretty soon, you're going to have to take a spaceship to the moon. Uh, we're going to have, it's going to be a great hotel. We're not going to have the maids bothering you at like 7 a.m. trying to get in your fucking room. Like sometimes you go to a hotel, like you go to Marriott Courtyard and they knock on the door at like nine o'clock and you scream at them, but they don't understand English. So you got it. You got, they open the door anyway and you're just fucking laying there and you're naked and you're on the floor because you couldn't even get to the bed last night. And, and they start screaming when they see you because you still have chocolate on your face from that fucking lava cake you ate. And you start screaming back at them. You're like, ah! And they just shut the door in fear. That's not what we're doing. We're going to have a high tech system where if you want your room clean, you're going to type it in and then somebody's going to know and they're going to show up and they're going to clean your room when you want it clean. They're not going to show up. Okay. Early in the fucking morning. That's not the way it's going to work. We have 24 hour day room service, tropical theme. We're going to have volleyball, you know, but it's not going to be hyper competitive where everybody's losing their minds. It's going to be very supportive volleyball. You know, where the nets are going to be like lower and because of the gravity, it's going to be fun because the balls will go everywhere. Okay. I'm telling you, it's fucking going to be dope. I'm very excited about it. And, and Wix is an asset. So if you go to Tim Dillon's going to hell.com, T-I-M Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N-S, going to hell.com, you can then find, you go to the bottom of the site, you'll find a link. And the link is going to take you to Wix and you'll get 10% off any of their premium plans. So if you want to open a hotel a resort, uh, you want to do it on earth, like a fucking, like you're living in 1996, good for you. I have no interest in that. We're breaking ground next month on my moon resort. And we're going to call it, we're going to call it 
paradise on the moon. And it's very, this is why I'm successful because I have vision. Many of you do not have vision and it's disgusting. But whatever, man, try out your shitty business. Maybe it'll work. Wix is a great place, you know? Now, and I don't smoke. And this podcast gives people the idea that I smoke because I smoke during the podcast to give me energy to tell the truth. Right, yeah. Marlboro Lights, they're not just for Asians, but Asians love them. Asians love a light cigarette because they're responsible. Now, know where you can get fucked up and act like a pig and know where you have to be a person. Mm -hmm. My One of my best friends was named Joe Munster. Joe Munster had the funnest house and his parents are my good friends. I, I, when I graduated school, I bought a house. It was rapidly foreclosed on and I became a, um, a regular at several local gin mills in my town and began to, uh, the process of throwing my life away, uh, by becoming a degenerate alcoholic, uh, a thief, a liar. And, and, and his parents are two of my best friends. I love them so much. They're amazing fucking people. His house was a house where you could kind of let it all out, be wild, be crazy. But if you went to my friend Maeve's house, her parents were rich. So you have to, you have to behave. Mm -hmm. Don't vomit all over the house with the nice carpet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There are houses where you can let it all hang out. And then there are houses and people where you have to be a little more guarded. Don't always be 100% of yourself. No one wants that. No one needs that. No, who wants what when? I could right. go to my friend Joe's house at three in the morning, drunk, having just hit a car, asking to be hid from the police. And his parents were not only happy to see me, they would provide me a meal. Not everyone's like that. Not everyone's like that when you're hiding in the attic because you just hit and ran someone. <laughs> Not everyone's going to come up with a bowl of seafood gumbo. Many people are going to tell you to leave. Right. So you got to know where should I go? You got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know, did you have a friend uh, or uh, 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 like a house where you could hang out and have fun and just go crazy and nobody would worry? Yeah. 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 Totally. yeah. There was where we watched porn and, you know, yeah. was, we, we knew we had a room, but they never checked on us, the parents. And you could just wake up in the middle of the night and go make food in the kitchen, be loud. Yes. And they you just could do care. whatever you want yeah. and no one would care. And you would you could just you abuse people and they would mm -hmm. abuse you. And that's a beautiful fucking thing. Yeah, it okay? really is. It's an it's a beautiful thing and it needs to happen. You need to have those situations where you exchange abuse. Mm -hmm. And then there are places where you have to look a little nicer, put it together, don't look like a slob. You got to be yeah. able to kind of judge where you're at. You got to okay. pick your spots. You got to pick your kinda spots. mentally put on a suit and tie. Absolutely. Great way to say it. Let's talk about some potential personalities for the kids. Personality number one, you can choose barstool sports, which means that you're just a bro. Yeah. You're kind of racist, but not really. You're just a bro. You just want to watch sports, talk about sports, maybe get your dick sucked. You don't really offer anything, yeah. but every now and then you have tender moments and you'll let your straight friend see your penis or you'll let your gay friend who doesn't know he's gay yet see your dick. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's important for whoever that kid is. Yeah. You can have tender moments, but you're you're a bro, but you have a big heart. Mm -hmm. You like family. You want people coming over to your house. You want to go to their houses. You like surrogate families. Right. Barstool sports. Great personality. You wear boat shoes, salmon shorts. Boat shoes, salmon shorts. The world thinks you're a rapist, but you're not. You can barely pull your little wink out in front of a girl. The world thinks you're running everything, but you're really not. You're more scared than anybody else is out there. Yeah. But you cover it up with bravado and whatever. It's barstool sports. Yeah. Now, that personality in your 30s is horrendous, and many people still have it. Saturdays are for the boys. No, they're not for the boys. They're for job interviews. Clean your life up. Save your life. Okay? <laughs> Nothing's for the boys. You're uploading this from your fucking mother's house. Right. Barstool sports. Weed. Next personality. Weed. You love weed. You love skating. You love snowboarding. 
you're a weed person. That's what you do. Maybe you sell weed. Maybe you know how to get the best weed. That's what gets you in all the things because you just, you love weed. Now you talk about that you're going to start your own weed startup and weed company and you love weed and that's all you talk Mm -hmm. about and you just smoke weed and it is what it is and you're a skinny kid, you have a big dick and you love fettuccine Alfredo and you love weed. That's it. Just okay. having weed on you will get you in so many circles. You need to have weed on you all the time if weed is going to be your personality. Your yep. car always smells like weed. You bake every single morning. People bake with you. They think it's funny. They think you're a disaster, but they don't really tell you to your face. They're scared for what's going to happen to you. Um, <laughs> and you will destroy your life two years <laughs> out of high school. <laughs> that being said, who gives a fuck? We're only talking about those four golden years. Yeah, exactly. It'll get you into the good parties. It'll be fun. You're a bacon, egg, and cheese guy. You like getting high. It's 2 a.m. at Taco Bell. You're a lot of fucking fun. Maybe you're a gamer and you everyone smokes weed and you're on Twitch and whatever. Yeah. Four people are giving you $3 and whatever. It's fun. It is what it is, okay? Nazi gamer is the next personality. You're a Nazi <laughs> and a gamer. You're a race realist. You believe in the JQ. You are hardcore red pilled. And I mean, you throw back the pills with abandon. You're into fitness because you're ready to fight a race war. Your name online is like Nordic Warrior 1488 or something like that. You know what I mean? You're hardcore into it. You know, all of this is because some chick wouldn't fuck you. You decided to read 15 books about the shape of skulls because you couldn't get laid. But that's a personality and stick to it. Here's another personality. Guy who talks about war crimes at a party. That's the other side. Black block. You want to be an Antifa, but you don't know where they meet up. You wear black all the time. You want to just throw a rock at a proud boy, but you can't find one because you live in a fucking New England town and everybody kind of agrees with you. In fact, you hate neoliberals more than anything. You rail against centrists and boomers and everybody that fucked the whole world up, even though you'd fuck it up too if you had any fucking goddamn chance at it, which you probably won't because thankfully climate change will ravage the earth before you get a chance to show what a fucking incompetent pussy you really are. It's the other side of Nazi gamer. You're actually friends with a Nazi gamer, even though you don't really like each other. You think you're... The other one's abhorrent, but you would probably like to fuck hardcore one day and it might happen. Who knows? Right. But you both are not too good with women. You're just the other side of it. You bury yourself in books or whatever. Some people are impressed by your knowledge and the fact that you use big words, but it's all concealing that you have roiling rage and inner turmoil inside because your mother's never looked at you the way she's looked at wine. (laughs) Another personality, missing person. Missing person is the type of personality you cannot go to school a lot. When you go to school, you have to sit absolutely silently in the back of the room. And in the middle of a class, you just start screaming. Ah! Then you run out and you disappear for two weeks. <laughs> then you're back. Then you're gone. Then you're back. Then you're gone. Nobody knows where you are. Is the state taking control of you? Nobody knows, but you're all over the place and you know where. Are you a runaway? Did you escape from a pedophile cult? Are you trying to get into a pedophile cult? You're a missing person. Nobody knows your deal and you can't let them because you're bland and nobody gives a shit, but you disguise it by being this kind of chaotic ball of crazy missing person. Mm -hmm. Fat girl with a clean car. We've gone through this. You're fat, but you have a tight ponytail. You have an immaculate car. You drive everyone to every party. You say very little. You love smoking a lot of weed and you never eat in front of people. But at the end of the night, you go park your car and you deep throat an entire fucking pizza. You are the fat girl with the clean car. You are a fucking American legend. Okay, you do not say much. You do not talk. You are there to be you're you're a bus driver. Essentially, you have a car. It's usually a midsize SUV, little truck, things like that. Could be a little coupe or whatever. You'll pack four or five thin people into it. Doesn't matter. You always stay sober enough to drive. That's what you bring to the table. Don't start getting fucked up now. And if you get too fucked up to drive, you have to let somebody else drive your car. And it doesn't matter whether they have a license or not. You are the fat girl with the clean car. You're here to save the fucking day. Okay? But don't ever have an opinion or say anything. It'll be greeted with weirdness. You speak in three to four word things, usually about traffic. Oh, there's a fucking accident here. Then you're done for the night. (laughs) And you're done for the night. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, don't provide too much. Fat girl with the clean car. Uh, Insanely gay person. You are insanely gay. You are the gayest person ever. You are made of literal cum. 
You were gay and you want everyone to know you're gay and you'll suck them off. You're going to fuck a lot of hot straight guys doing this, okay? You're a lot better looking than me. You have a six pack. You're a dancer and you can fuck a lot of straight guys in the bathroom when they're not looking. You're, you're part of the theater crew, but not really because you really want to suck off a football player because who wants to fuck another fucking a guy that you've been dancing around with all day? So you're the insanely gay person. You put it out there. And the football guys, they're kind of disgusted by you. But some of them, you know, if their girlfriend wasn't around and if it was late enough at night, would probably let you swallow their hog, you know? And it's very important that you be, you're an insanely gay person, obnoxiously gay, over the top. You've got 15 pride flags on you at all times. You're throwing them at people. You're the insanely gay person. White guy who wants to be black or who thinks he is black. If you come from the Northeast, these are Jews who think they're Italian who want to be black. You say things like, yo, man, and son, and somehow you get away with it. You hang out with the black kids, but then you also hang out with the white kids every now and then. You've been accepted. Uh, you're usually rich. Mm -hmm. You love black culture. You love rap music. You love everything black. You look at your own skin and you wish you could fucking take a, a, a fucking a potato peeler and, and just skin yourself every night. And wake up and be a glorious Nubian god, but you can't. It's not what it is. You don't have that big black dick. You've got a, you know, respectable Jewish pecker, but you love black people. That's the way it is. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, I mean, should you be more comfortable in your own skin? Perhaps. I'm not here to judge. That's your personality. Stick to it. Okay? That's who you're going to be. Yeah. That's a common one. That's a common one. It, and it does very well. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it does very well. Um, whore who fights. You're a whore and you're always fighting. You have two best friends and you fight them every day. Physically, over the phone, you're just fighting or fucking. You exist in one of two states. <laughs> fighting or fucking. You're either fucking three guys at a party or you're fighting six girls in a park. Either way, that's who you are. Your drama, you bring it to the table. You wish you were Puerto Rican, but you're just Italian. You know? Right. You want to be one of those city tough girls, but you're not, okay? Uh -huh. You had some weird shit with your uncle early on. You didn't process that. So you just want to fight everybody you see. You've punched your boyfriend in the face and then had the best sex afterwards when you choked the shit out of each other. You've probably fucked a teacher, and if not, you should. You've posted an ad on Backpage here or there, you know? Yeah, you, you're 17, but you aren't seeking arrangements. And if a few <laughs> businessmen want to buy you some dinner and throw you some money for shoes, who the fuck are you to judge? It doesn't matter. You're a fighter and you're a fucker. That's what you are. Maybe your name's like Angela or something. <laughs> you like to throw the fuck down. What did yeah. you say to me? You're always ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Anything so people don't get inside of you and see who you really are which is a scared little girl, a scared and traumatized little girl. But you're not going to be Billie Eilish and have a bunch of candles lit and go, and make millions of dollars. You're going to fight or you're going to fuck. That's who you are. Yeah. Fat girl who doesn't know she's fat. This is big. <laughs> you have no idea you're fat. You hang out with all the popular girls. You wonder why their boyfriends aren't fucking you. You're genuinely stunned. <laughs> You're perplexed that you are not getting more play. You have no idea why this is happening. Mm -hmm. You're fun. You kid around with everybody. Everybody loves you. You like to, you're everybody's little sister. Mm -hmm. Somebody fucks you once when they're really loaded and you make it out to be more than it really is. You don't know that you're a chubbo, but you kind of own it. And then you also kind of don't own it. And then when it comes to prom, you really try to doll it up. Those girls really go crazy at prom because they think one dress is going to cover up what they've been doing for the last fucking four years. You know? Yeah. The fat girl has no idea she's fat. The fat guy who talks about pussy all the time but never gets it and wouldn't know what to do if he did get it. You're a fat guy and you just want to fuck chicks. Your best friends are hot guys that fuck girls all the time. You're on the football team. You're decent at it, but nobody wants to touch you. You're very angry. You drink all the time. You love fighting because it's a way that you can show that you have some value on this fucking planet. Nobody really calls you to hang out, but they like having you around when it's a big party because you're just a big lug. 
you're hammered and all you care about is pussy. You'll be like, yeah, I need fucking pussy there. You'll pretend to not want to go someplace. If somebody calls you like, yo, any girls there? But you don't give a shit. You know if there were girls there, they're not fucking taking your dick out of your fucking dough body pants. Yeah. It's not going to happen. But you, 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 you tell everybody, hey, I just want to make sure there's enough bitches there before I show up. Fuck you. But that's, that's an important archetype of person. Kid whose mother's a teacher, who's kind of a goody two-shoes, but lets it all out with one party or two parties, and he vomits the whole time because this is the first time. It's usually senior year. He's letting himself loose. And he's got a girlfriend. He'll keep her for four years. He kind of goes to the popular parties for 50 minutes. Nobody remembers him. Maybe he's class president. Maybe he's in the student government. Maybe he's somebody like that. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, he'll get really, really hammered and vomit all over the place. But he knows he's an establishment guy. He's a Fallon. He's a whatever. He's got the right opinions in the right package, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Talks to the teacher after class a lot. Yes. Yeah. Lesbian who works a lot of jobs and lets everyone know how hard she works. <laughs> could be a catering hall, could be a restaurant, but she's always working. And she's always working. And she wants everyone to know how hard she works and how much responsibility her job gives her. It's a great way to not take stock of where she is in the whole social fabric of everything. Usually it's a lesbian and she's working. She's been working since she's four years old. And she'll claim that she's managing some, some thing or whatever. This is, these are the personalities, some of the personalities. There's an innumerable amount of personalities. There's not an innumerable amount of genders. Although that's not a bad idea. If you're a bland white chick, you can just dye your hair green and you say, I'm they, them. My new name is, uh, you know, Astrid or whatever. You know, you look, right. look up some constellation, name yourself after that. You're now a new person. And, uh, you know. <laughs> I talked about a new business idea that I had earlier where I was going to open a tropical resort on the moon. And it's going to be like a resort, like a hotel, like a high-end tropical hotel. It's going to be on the moon, but it will not have a moon or a space theme. It will have a tropical theme. And because the rainforest uh, is, is being burned on Earth, the only real rainforest you're going to get is at my resort on the moon. And I'm going to have a big resort. And a big resort is very complex to run. you got to run it. Okay? That's why I'm going to use Monday.com. Because Monday.com keeps everybody in line, okay? There's nothing worse than looking for emails and yelling at people, blaming people, screaming. That's not the way it's going to be. Monday.com is software that enhances the effectiveness of your business plan. It allows you to coordinate and collaborate with people. It is a fucking very easy to use tool that keeps everybody accountable. People, people, I will fire people at my tropical moon resort if they fuck up. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not trying to hear your mouth. It doesn't matter to me. Do you understand me? I will straight up lose my mind and start screaming. I don't want to do that. I don't want to scream in the lobby because the whole thing is tropical relaxation, making people feel good. But I don't want to have to go up to the front desk and start banging people's heads around literally. But I will if they, if they don't do what I want them to do, which is so important to have a thing like monday.com. Many of you have business. It's perfect. Monday.com, if you're two people collaborating or there's thousands of people around the globe or in space like I'm going to have, it's a perfect tool to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Everybody's united. Everybody's connected. It's very important to me to have an efficient resort on the moon with a tropical theme. Okay. We're going to have like maybe like 800 guest rooms and 200 of them are going to be suites. The guest room is going to cost a million a night. The suites are going to be like 5 million a night. And the suites are going to have like a separate room for you to kind of relax and sit. It'll have a separate sitting room. And it'll probably have like a balcony or a terrace, but the guest rooms will not have that. The suites will, and then then there will be villas. The villas are like above suites, and the and the villas, and in order because this is very complex, in order to keep this all going, you need Monday.com. Okay, if you have a business out there and you're disorganized, Monday.com is essential. We're starting to use it here. We're building a little tiny business right now with a podcast, just trying to entertain people, getting people out to live shows. But that's not my main goal. My main goal is to open a tropical resort on the moon within five years. And it will happen. 
but it's only going to happen if I stay organized and efficient. A lot of people out there are not organized. I used to work in a mortgage company and a lot of people, you know, you'd always be like, Doreen, where's that email? And Doreen would know because she's stupid, right? She'd be like, I don't know where it is. I just saw it. And then you're like, oh, fuck, my life is over because I can't get to what I need to get to. That's not good. I don't have time for that when I'm running a, a, a thousand room resort on the moon. I'm not going to have time for that. I'm going to need people to be efficient. You understand what I mean? Another thing I'm going to have is I'm going to have big fish tanks, you know, because there's not fish in outer space, but people are going to want to feel comfortable because when people go to the moon, they're going to be like, I feel like I'm not on earth, which is good because that's why they're traveling, but they're going to want some comforts, creature comforts, things that remind them of home, fish tanks. Okay. So I'll have fish tanks. Uh, and I might have like dogs and cats to make people feel like they're at home. And we might do the thing where like, if you want a dog or a cat sent to your room for an hour to pet, we're going to be able to do that. And we're going to have an email system and we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to make sure that all of the scheduling is efficient. And so that if you request a dog, you're like, Hey, send a lab up to room 1512. And I send one up and you're like, Oh man, I feel like I'm at home. Like I was weirded out when I first got here cause I was on the moon, but now I'm not weirded out. I'm really enjoying this because you sent up a lab, you know, maybe a chocolate lab or a golden lab. And it's a you know, beautiful dog or a cat, you know, you send up a cat and cats are kind of vicious and cold, but Still, there's something about them that makes you feel at home. And that's important. That's what the whole resort's about. It's like, you're far away from home, but are you? That's the whole thing, but are you? That's really what I want you to feel. Like, you don't really know. Like, you would be like, oh, fuck. I feel like I'm on a tropical resort, a two-hour plane ride from my house, but not. You're in the middle of space. You're in outer space at my tropical moon resort. And it's going to be called Paradise on the Moon. And I mean, a lot of people doubt me and they don't. A lot of people don't take me seriously when I tell them this, specifically Uber drivers, but that's okay because that's what your rating is based on, not your driving. It's do you get, lend credibility to my dreams or not? And if you kind of laugh at me when I say this, not only will I rate you low, but I'll try to I'll try to make you get in an accident in a way that will only hurt you and not me. So Monday.com, what's the promo code here? Monday.com slash Tim. Monday.com slash Tim. If you have a business and you want to be effective, you want to be efficient. You want to keep track of where all these emails are going, where all these appointments are going. If you're in sales, marketing, anything you're doing, if you're running a resort on the moon, whatever it happens to be, you're going to need a business plan. Monday.com is a software that allows you to streamline everything you're doing. It's so much easier. It makes it very simple. So that's really what we're trying to do. So if you're into that, if you're trying to be somebody, you know, I think monday.com slash Tim is the way to do it. Go there and, and start thinking about squeezing more money out of your business, holding people accountable. Because I, I can tell already, like my first speech I'm going to give to my staff, I'm going to walk into the hotel. I'm going to say, this is my dream. And they're all going to look at me and they're going to be, they're going to be amazed. And I'm going to say, this is my dream. And I'm going to say, because we have monday.com, we're going to hold you accountable. You're not going to get away with nothing here. You're not getting away with it. Don't tell me you didn't get a message or that you lost an email or you didn't know when a meeting was going to be. Because we'll throw you right in a black hole. We'll throw you in outer space. Because I'm going to have the staff sign waivers that, that, they're, that they understand that we can, we can remove them from the resort. And then once you're out of the resort, you're kind of on your own in space and a lot of people aren't going to be able to do it. so that it is real. Like the threat of doing bad is real. It's not fake. It's not like one of those things where you just quit, whatever, because where are you going to go? You know, Jupiter is not hospitable to life. So Monday.com, there should be no excuses. You understand me? So Monday.com slash Tim. And if you're interested in my, in my uh, paradise on the moon resort, We'll be making a formal announcement pretty soon. And uh, a lot of people are trying to do this. Um, Richard <laughs> Richard Branson and like Bezos and all those guys. But I'm not afraid of them because none of them understand how to make people feel at home on another planet. And I do. I get it. You know, because we're going to have like the, the best thing I think sometimes about a hotel is you have a, a breakfast a buffet. And we're going to have like a breakfast buffet. 
Um, and it's going to be awesome. And one of the things that's going to make it different from other breakfast buffets is that it w it's going to be on the moon and you're going to have big windows as you eat breakfast that look out into space. And that's going to be fucking nice. Like a lot of people don't do that. Like the buffet room is like a dumb, it almost looks like a conference room, but ours is going to be very nice with huge windows that look out onto a space station. So that when you're eating a waffle with your family and you're like, what should we do today? You know, it, you know there's going to be activities, but I don't want to go into all that because I don't want people copying my shit. You're going to get a free 14 day trial. If you go to monday.com slash Tim. Thank you. Here's the other thing. So now let's go back to some actual specifics. Don't trust. There's a few people you should never trust. Never trust the popular girl who's in theater. Mm. This girl has divided loyalties. She really wants to be popular, but she thinks she's an actress. What she really is is mentally ill. People like that will pretend to be your friend because they fancy themselves to be humanitarians and they like to befriend losers and put them in their pocket. But when it matters, they'll never have your back and they don't really like you. And they're always going to choose the popular people because they're not fucking stupid. So any popular, if you're a popular chick, you should be a bitch. And you should walk around like a bitch. Own it. Like if you're a rich person, be rich. Don't go to open mics. Don't be, you know, do, be what you are. So don't trust that person. Mm -hmm. That's a person you have to watch out for. The person with divided loyalties. And a lot of times it's the girl who's popular, but like, oh, don't make fun of this kid. Yeah. And then she'll befriend you. A little too nice to the disenfranchised. Yeah, a little too nice to the disenfranchised. She thinks that, uh, you know, you, you, you are in love with her probably. Or you like uh, that she's going to, you know, one day she's going to bring you to all the cool places or whatever. None of that's ever going to fucking happen. Okay. So don't trust her. She has divided loyalty. She's, uh, she, it's duality. She split herself into two people. Okay. The popular girl. And then the girl that feels secretly a little insecure around that group. And she wants to be better than them. And she thinks she can do it by being a, a, a third rate member of the theater group. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is, these are people to watch out for kids. I hope this is helpful to many of you out there. I mean, many of you are irredeemable losers and can't be helped, but I'm trying to help. I'm doing my best to help you, you know? Um, what else? Cause there are some, there are, there are some other important things. Spend your summers getting ready to, be the person you want to be when you get back into school. Get in shape. Be the fat kid who comes back hot. Mm -hmm. Be the goody two-shoes who comes back a, a, a drug dealer. Be the kid that wasn't serious about school who comes back getting all A's. Change. People Evolve. love a drastic change. They love a drastic change. That was me. I changed. Yeah. You know, people love change. I became outgoing and funny and I lost weight and I looked better and all of that shit matters. They love a drastic change. Allow the summer to be the place that you change and you become something else. If your parents are rich, use that money. If your parents are animals, use that. Allow people to come and have parties at your house and absolutely destroy it. Light it on fire. It doesn't matter. Hey, you don't like these jokes? Here's what you can do. If you don't like these fucking jokes, you can take them and shove it up your ass. But you fucking degenerates would love that, don't you? <laughs> you would love a fucking couple of things up your ass. You free love freaks. Sex. Don't get too into it. Unless you really know what you're doing. Don't be super weird about it. You don't need to be fucking all the time it's more about friendship than not. If you have a girlfriend, that's fine. You should be hooking up with people and whatever, but don't force that aspect. Don't become obsessed with it. Don't become crazy. You know, don't become the guy that's obsessed with getting laid. And then you never do, mm, right. you know, Yeah. don't become the girl that uses sex as a weapon. Unless you know what you're fucking doing and you can really use it as a weapon. You start blackmailing people, you know? Yeah. Have a healthy relationship with your family, but don't be too like 
get other families, get surrogate families, go on vacations with people, be independent, start this young, right. go on summer vacation. If families are taking you on vacations, it means they really like you and love you. That's very important. Be like a young socialite. Yes. Be a young socialite. Get out of your comfort zone. Do shit you wouldn't necessarily think of yourself doing. Challenge yourself. That movie, Eighth Grade with Bo Burnham, is a decent movie. It's not a bad movie. Bo Burnham's a genius. I don't know him, but he is a genius. Uh, I don't love some of like, he does this one thing where he's like, I'm an artist. And he's singing this thing. And he's like, I'm an artist. We shouldn't be here. We should be feeding families. It's like, that's not how it works. No one made the decision to not feed a family to come see this comedy show. Right. Yeah. That's not the way the economy works. It has structural problems. That's not <laughs> it. Just go be a genius. Shia LaBeouf, just go be a genius. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear a podcast. Right. Just make a brilliant thing and I'm all on board for it. We're all going to go and great. Okay. And that movie eighth grade is good because it's a girl that feels that she's not in. And then she goes to this party that she got invited to that she feels weird about be that person. And then she wants to be with the, the kid that's good looking, but she ends up being with the goofball kid, you know, mm -hmm. because the kid is good looking kind of a dick and asks her to blow him. Yeah. I, don't, don't bully people. Don't shit on people. If you're going to be funny, never build your act around another kid. They could transfer. They could kill themselves. And you got to build from <laughs> zero. Don't be cruel. You should never be cruel. In my yearbook, which I should have gotten out and read the things people wrote about me. They're like, you never made fun of anybody, but you're fucking hilarious. Punch up. Not in my world. Comedy, I should be able to punch wherever. But in high school, punch up. Make fun of teachers. You know, impersonate teachers. Yeah, yeah. Get good impressions. Make fun of the, but also be friends with teachers. Be cool. Be able to be late. Know how to do it. Know when you can joke around and when you can't. That's the other thing. A lot of people in that quote unquote popular group are very insecure and threatened. So know when you can shit on them and know when you can joke around with them and know when you can. Know what you can say when you can say it. Read them. Mm-hmm. Look at people and read them. What do you want from them and what do they want from you? There's nothing wrong with analyzing that dynamic of relationships. It doesn't make you a sociopath. It makes you aware. Know what things to bring up to the teacher that you know the teacher will then talk about forever. And then yes. the class, you don't have to do any work. And then all yes. the kids will like you because you keep bringing up something and distracting A hundred percent. Know what you can do in a class to get some attention. There was a moment in Spanish class where I never knew what the word meant because I didn't care. I believe we're in America, speak English. <laughs> but we would go and she goes, what is halada? And halada ironically means ice cream. And I should have known that. But I didn't know that it meant ice cream. So I just said, a little pudding. And it was very funny. I said, a little pudding? And it <laughs> killed. And she went, no. And she laughed, though. She laughed. And it was okay. If you're funny, it'll all be okay. Not at my age. Not at 34. It's going to be hell. It's going to end so bad. I can't even describe to the end. It'll be so bad. My landlord just texted me if the bugs in my room have been fixed. If the bugs I'm going to have to stay somewhere because the bugs are apparently, they've went insane. Giuliani and Trump Jr. were at the stand tonight. Oh, wow. I should have went. You know what, folks? I'm where I need to be in fucking Holly. Bitch, I'm in Hollywood. People tell me, oh, you missed out. Oh, did I? I'm in Hollywood. Have you heard of it? I have a meeting tomorrow at Le Pain. How do you pronounce quotidian? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. With the guy who did American Vandal. We're going to sit there and stare at each other and eat, you know, fast food, smoked salmon or whatever the place, that place shoves out. We it's are. important. It's important to be popular, man. It's important to be cool. It's important to have people like you be fun, be cool, you know, drink or smoke or don't or be whatever, but just be the person that people want to be around. Just fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks is a great way to say it, Devin. It's a yeah. great fucking way to say it. Fill in the blanks. Don't hold on to the uh, old conception of who you are. Being a loser doesn't make you special or interesting. Everybody's a loser. Trust me. I know I'm surrounded by lots of them. Many of them have millions and millions of dollars. Okay, money and real estate don't fix the fact that you suck. Oscars and Emmys won't fix the fact that you suck. Sometimes you just fucking suck. And the people that suck always know they fucking suck. Doesn't matter how much money they have. That's why they're always killing themselves. How long have we done, Ben? 45 
45. We're going to wrap this up pretty soon because we've got to do some ads. And this was a pretty intense episode. And I think a lot of people have learned a lot. And maybe there are people that are confused and maybe the message wasn't for you. That was a pretty good list. I think it was a great list. And I think there were some great strategies. Yeah. This is how to do it. This is how to make it happen. Go in there with a goal. Be like, I don't want to be a loser. I want to be cool. What's an attainable friend? How do I step on his head to get to that person? Who's, whose shoulders can I stand on to get to where I need to go? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, ditch your loser friends. It's over. It doesn't matter. But I've been friends with Billy and shut up. Bring them with you. And if you can't, you can't. And by the way, go places alone. Go to parties alone. Hang out places alone. It'll endear you to people. People will be forced. You'll be forced to go and talk to people. Be alone. Be confident. Maybe go with one other person. You know who's a great person to go with? The fat girl with the clean car. Because she'll never outshine you. Yeah. Okay. She might not even come into the party. She might just she'll come the into the party. And- she'll stand in the backyard and smoke cigarettes and then wait and you'll get in that beautiful car and it'll always smell so nice like a cherry air freshener or something, the ocean breeze or something. Don't go and hang out. Don't, don't bring a crew. You can't elevate a crew. You can elevate yourself. Mm-hmm. You cannot elevate a crew. Elevate yourself and then bring the crew with you. It's the way it is. It's yeah. the way it fucking is, man. And um, that's it. I mean, there's not too much else. I mean, the reality of the situation is this. Most of you will fail. I'm like talking to the troops at D-Day now. Most of you are going to the beach. Some of you are going to get shot in the head while you're still on the boat. Remember that scene? Mm -hmm. Saving Private Ryan. You're shot in the head before you're out of the boat. You don't even touch the beach. You don't even feel the glory of war. You're just dead. You're a flag on someone's fucking mantle. You're a picture in a picture frame in a house that nobody even goes in. Some old lady stares at you and goes, was that Jimmy? No one cares. You're a ghost. (laughs) Most of you will be ghosts. And most of you, you know, at that point, what else do you really have? There's nothing wrong with that. I know so many people that should have been killed in Iraq. They never were in the military, but I look at them and I say, you should have died for the country. You should have died a hero. You should have died a hero. But for some of you, for a small percentage of you, for the ones that are in the game, for those that have a chance, for the fighters, the people that can make it, join a team. I joined swim team. It was hilarious. I was a good swimmer. Yeah. One of my friends said to me once, he goes, you smoke three cigarettes on the way to this practice. I said, yeah. He goes, I read you like a book. It was a funny moment. We no longer speak. The point is this. Immediately after you leave high school, none of these people will matter and you'll never see them again. Don't try to hold on to friendships with them. It's embarrassing. They're people to practice on. You practice figuring shit out on these people that are temporary in your life. For the You've most had part. some brilliant insights here. You really have. You've done, I'm telling you, I've done very well here. <laughs> They are people to practice on. Have you ever tried to trim your ball hair with a steak knife or a pair of scissors or a flame, an open flame? It's an absolute nightmare. It's not good. Not good. Especially if you're going to go out on a date and you might need to be ready taking an old pair of rusty scissors from a drawer that you haven't opened since you were a little kid and you got construction paper in there and glue. Take it out. That old pair of rusty scissors from the early Clinton administration and putting it near your balls where your future bankrupt children live is a bad move. It's not good. Think about grazing your sack with something sharp. Stop thinking about it if that excites you. It's not good. You don't want that. Nobody wants a bloody penis. That is such a rule. People do not want a bloody dick. They just don't. It's important to manscape with the right tools. Not rusty scissors, 
not a butter knife, not gardening utensils you found. You got to do something better. Treat yourself and treat whoever's going down and exploring that area face to face, up close and personal. That's the way it is. There are not that many products on the market for this. Literally, there's not. There's one called the Body Groom by Norelco. There's It's not great. I've tried it. It's not that great. But there is something called Manscaped. And Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their invention is called the Lawnmower 2.0 with proprietary skin-safe technology. Okay? It is small. Not saying you are. But it is small, easy to hold, and designed to get in all your nooks and crannies without snagging your sack. I'm telling you, it's very important. You want to stay hygienic down there. You want to stay fresh. This is a way to do it. Buy this. Buy this product. If you like my show and you want to have a nice dick, if you like the show and you want to have a immaculate area around your penis, this is the product to do it. I'm telling you. Okay? They've got a lot of things. Not only the lawnmower 2.0, they've got the prop, the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. A ball deodorant and moisturizer. The balls are the new dick. That's what it's coming down to. The balls are the new dick. Where's your sack at? Is it moisturized? Is it hydrated? Does it smell nice? Balls are the new dick. I should really copyright that. I want shirts with that. That's reality. We're heading into 2020 pretty soon. The dick, forget it. It's over. It's patriarchal. It assaults people. Okay? It looks like a weapon. Not all of them. But that's not the type of tool we need in a more enlightened era. We need the balls. And you need to take care of your balls. You're going to have sex with women with your balls pretty soon. Not your dick. Not penetrating in and out, in and out. No. Balls only. Lots of girls out there are going to be like, I'm a balls only girl. And you're going to be like, thank God. You're evolved and enlightened. And just for you, my balls smell great and they're trimmed. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TIM at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code TIM. This is literally a product that you need if you are sexually active which I imagine 6 to 8% of my audience is. The rest of you, you got to invest in yourself a little bit. But for that crew that's having sex somewhat regularly, especially if you're a man, but if you're a woman that identifies as a man, get this. If you're non-binary, get this. Doesn't matter. If you're a non-binary lesbian, get this. If you're a gay man who identifies as a a gender, like, um, what are those, like, uh, Zer, buy this. It's fine. If you're a man who identifies as a woman, get this. All of it. It's all under the umbrella of buy the product. Every gender needs the product. Because there's fur everywhere on everybody and it needs to go. Maybe take it down. Maybe just take a little off. Maybe you want a little buzz cut down there. Maybe you want the full Epstein. Just bare skin. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. But you need the product. 
I use it. A lot of people I know use it. If you do not like, if and it is horrific, to ch- especially if you have to shave your balls quickly, like you're in a rush and you're like, fuck, I just have to shave my balls before I go out to this tapas place just in case things work out. Okay? Get 20% off free shipping with the code TIM, manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TIM. It helps the show. It helps you. Your balls will never look better. And uh, it's very exciting. Thank you. There will be a moment. This is profound. It's so profound. The whole episode is very profound. I just hope it's reaching people that it can help. And if this did help you, please tell me. And, uh, you know, especially if you're a kid, like a high school kid or college kid, it would be really, it would be great to me. I don't know that I reached many young people. I was recently in Raleigh and my friend's like, I bet a bunch of college kids will come out. And I said, I bet they won't. Uh, my audience are, are people like myself that are shot. Um, you know? Yeah. It's the way it is. I'm connecting with people who not only feel like the end is coming, but welcome it with open arms. <laughs> they, they welcome the end of this human experiment like a puppy at Christmas. Now, there'll be a moment when you go Thanksgiving Eve You'll come back from college. Maybe you'll go to college or maybe like me, you'll be a man and you'll sell. I was a mortgage man. You'll, you'll come back Thanksgiving Eve and maybe it doesn't happen the first year, but usually it's not too soon after that. It's the second year. You'll be standing there and it'll be Thanksgiving Eve and you'll realize that something's off. Something is wrong. Something doesn't make any sense. And it's nothing that you're doing and it's nothing that anyone else is doing. The reality is it's like the, that, that shitty movie Stephen King made the Langoliers. I think it was a TV movie. Mm. They keep, they go through some time warp and they land in like LA, but it's like a few minutes before when it's supposed to be. And everything looks the same except nothing has an echo and the food tastes weird. And it's like, it's the same, but different. And they realize that the thing that explains that is time. Time is profound. Time moves things. So you'll be some bar and you'll be looking at all these people and you'll go, oh, fuck, I'm not supposed to be here anymore. I'm in the wrong time. I'm in the wrong dimension, whatever. Like Jess Reed's got me talking about dimensions. But you'll realize that and then it will be time to move on. It'll be time to move on and get a new group of people. And this is what happens. And this will probably happen throughout your life to an extent until you find people you really love and appreciate, you know? Until you find... Your close family, your friends, your your business people, the, the people that whatever. Until you find them, you're going to keep having that moment when you look at a group of people and go, fuck, I'm done. If you're going somewhere, there's some people that have the same friends for their entire life, the same four or five friends. That's very charming. That's not going to be the experience of anybody that wants to truly make anything happen. If you truly make anything happen, you're going to have this time and it's Thanksgiving Eve is a great way to explain it, but it'll happen over and over again. When you look at a group of people that you were enamored with, you love and, but no longer really excite you and you're no longer excited to be where you are. And then you have to pick yourself up and go somewhere else. And I can't tell you when that's going to be, but if you ignore that feeling, if you stuff it down, If you shove it down and you stay, you become a loser. That's how you become a loser. That's how you become a failure. Okay? And that's the reality. So when you have that excited feeling about something you're doing or the people you're with, you're you're moving in the right direction. And when you look at everyone else and you go, well, they're not doing anything wrong and I'm not doing anything wrong, and but it's just not working anymore. And that excitement and that energy has died. You have to, you know, Kelly Catrone, just whatever. She was, she was on the hills, that dumb show. She was a fashion PR in New York City. Forget her. The point is, she had some, just some fucking quote that I'm sure she stole from someone, but she said, if you're the, in New York, if you're the coolest person at the party, it's time to leave. I believe that to be the case. I'd rather be the loser at a table of people that have a lot more than me. That, those are the people you're going to learn from. That's what's going to be interesting. If you're the coolest person, if you're the most accomplished person, you try to get to that other table. 
where there are people, because that's what makes life exciting, you know? And it starts in high school. And many of you, like I said, man, you're the damned. And I'll quote this again, and people go, can you go through a podcast without quote? No, you shut up. I like this quote, okay? I don't know where it's from. It's from a play, but I don't know what they're referencing. I think it's Greek mythology. Many of you, if you stuff that feeling down that you shouldn't be somewhere and you stay, you will become like one of these people wandering the earth, not able to get into heaven or hell, awaiting the ferryman to take you to where you need to go. And if you answer that call and you know what you're doing and you feel like you're always ready to conquer the next thing, fucking, you might be Donald Trump. TimDillonComedy.com for dates. Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N on Twitter and Instagram. Please follow us there. Please subscribe to the podcast, rate, review, share the clips on Instagram and Twitter and everything. Facebook's a graveyard, but whatever. We need some boomers. Devin, where can they find you? YouTube.com slash Devin Costa, D-V-A-N-C-O-S-T-A. Uh, podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts. Hate that you love it with Devin Costa. And then Sebastian, he looks out and he just fucking <laughs> takes the mic. He wraps it around his head like he's hanging himself and he goes, hey, I'm doing an Epstein. You guys all know Epstein because you're all on his plane. Fucking kids. You all fuck kids. And then he drops the mic and he walks out because fuck those people. Yeah.